Hey y'all, we're gonna take you step by step on how to get the highly anticipated StarkNet airdrop. StarkNet is another huge ZK Rollup project with its airdrop also being one of the most anticipated this year, especially after Arbitrum. In fact, after Arbitrum, StarkNet saw a huge jump in their TVL onto their mainnet since March. So if we look at DeFi Llama, the TVL right now is at nearly 9 million, and this is insane. And with the governance vote for the mainnet upgrade to StarkNet Alpha in progress, it is very likely that the StarkNet airdrop is coming very soon. So in this video, we'll show you a couple of things you can do to position for a potential StarkNet airdrop. So, before you can interact with any of the dApps on StarkNet, you will first need an Argent X wallet. So Argent is a wallet designed for StarkNet, uh, as well as ZK Sync. Um, unfortunately, you can't use MetaMask on StarkNet right now, and I find that kind of funny because StarkNet, after all, is an Ethereum Layer 2 solution. Uh, that has to do with the fact that StarkNet has their own programming language called Cairo, um, but I do hope that one day they will make it EVM compatible as well. I mean, come on, you're an Ethereum Layer 2 solution. Once you have those ready, you can come to the StarkGate bridge. So you connect your MetaMask here, and you connect your, your Argent X, and then you can bridge your ETH to the StarkNet that way. And you will have already ticked off one of the airdrop criteria as we've learned from Arbitrum, which is bridging to the mainnet. You can also use Orbiter Finance to bridge your ETH to StarkNet, uh, but I personally, for me, I would just use StarkGate because StarkGate is a bridge that is built by StarkNet themselves. But Orbiter Finance is also fine. It, it doesn't hurt to generate even more on-chain evidence. Uh, in fact, Orbiter Finance is used by a lot of people to bridge to all these big layer twos, and their volume has been ramping up for the past month. So go for it if you want. As with every airdrops, you will need to generate on-chain evidence that shows that you've been interacting with the ecosystem projects. So if we look at StarkNet, the top three dApps that are deployed on the network are DEXs. So you can start swapping tokens or provide liquidity at any one of these DEXs, uh, or even better if you can use all three of them to generate even more on-chain evidence. So let's take 10K swap for example. You swap your ETH to any one of these assets, whatever you want. I would go for stable coins. Uh, that way, if I provide liquidity, I would I would provide stable coin liquidity pools to, to avoid that impermanent loss. That way, if I do want to withdraw my assets and bridge it back to Ethereum, I don't have much loss compared to other other assets like WBTC ETH because you know the impermanent loss for those are much higher because the values are always changing. So same thing, you can go to Jedi Swap as well, MySwap, and it's just the same thing. They're, they all follow the same model as Uniswap V3, so it's very easy to use if you're already familiar with Uniswap. And I would recommend swapping stable coins every two or three days. You can even do it every day if you want. Uh, stable coins, that way it's just one-to-one -one roughly. You know, you still have to pay gas, but as we've learned from the Arbitrum airdrop, Frequencies of smart contract interaction is actually a very important criteria. So the more you swap, the more likely that you'll get even more airdrops when StarkNet launches their airdrop. So now that we're done with the DEXs, NFTs are next. So MintSquare is an NFT marketplace that's deployed on StarkNet as well. Uh, make sure you can, when you connect your Argent X wallet, it's on the mainnet, but you can also do it on the testnet as well. That costs absolutely nothing. You can mint a new NFT here. Uh, you enter the name, the description, uh, if you have any external links that you want to connect to your NFT, you put it there. Uh, attributes as well to, to find the rarity of your NFT. And it's completely free, you just have to pay gas fees uh, on the mainnet. You can also go check out their collections if, you know, if, you're, an NF if you're interested in NFT. Uh, I'm not, unfortunately. Uh, yeah, let's say early starters. And if you're interested in any of them, you can make an offer. It's, it's very similar to OpenSea. Uh, another one is Aspect.co, is also an NFT marketplace on StarkNet. Uh, same thing, you, you make an offer, you buy, if you're into NFTs really. Uh, personally for me, I, I would not touch this. Uh, I would mint an NFT because it's free. You just have to pay gas fees. 
But yeah, go for it if you want. So the last thing you can do is use StarkNet.id. It is an identity and domain issuer, just like Ethereum name service, ENS. So you can start racking up these domains uh, while they're cheap. So you can make an identity here. You hit the plus, and if you have some ETH, confirm, and then you'll have your own identity. And once you have your identity, you'll see an icon here. You, put, you press into it, and you connect your social account and it's very likely that you'll get an airdrop once you have those done. And for the domains, you can rack up as many domains as you want. Let's say airdrop run. And it's very similar to Ethereum name service. And look at the price. It's still pretty low. So you better grab them before they go any higher. But yeah, those are some of the dApps that you can use to qualify for the StarkNet airdrop. But there are also hundreds of other projects on the StarkNet ecosystem that you can also use to qualify for the airdrop to generate even more on-chain evidence. So that concludes our airdrop guide for StarkNet. I hope you guys find it very helpful. And if you do find it helpful, please like and subscribe to this channel so that we can continue creating these awesome content for you guys to watch. With much love, Shannon.